Saddam Hussein asked the white lady, April Gillespie, that, 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 well, we were thinking about making a couple of moves. Oh, we don't have nothing about, to do about that. That's why Saddam Hussein, to the day he was hit in 91, back then, he didn't think that the, because the white lady had told him, ah, we don't have nothing to do with that. They set him up. We'll go into all of that later. Okay, we are here now and we're happy to be here. And we like our job. But y'all should cooperate a little bit. Ain't no sense of trying to turn us around with uh, don't hurt nobody's feelings. What? Don't hurt nobody's feelings? What are they doing to the Muslims in the world? They're just blowing up and they're killing Muslims anytime they want. Anytime they want. They don't have no, they don't make no excuses. They said, oh, we're just going to kill them. Why? Well, they lose. Yeah, and those leaders are silent, silent about it. They, you know, they kind of deserve to get stabbed. Every, you know. Everything <laughs> they're doing to, oh, well, who are you? They're talking about, oh, you're, you're, you're hanging the Iranian dissidents. What? The police walk up to us and shoot us down. Right? And it's okay. Now, to me, arise this little boy, and you see that nice picture of that young guy? 12 years old. They just drove up and shot him down. The car just drove up and shot him. He didn't say, hey, man, what you got? Imagine in our time, you know, everybody used to have cap guns and used to wear two pistols and cowboy days. Man, we got through that. We was lucky. Because they could say, man, we got to shoot you because you got a gun. Good God Almighty. So, it's not that we don't care about other people, but we care about other people. That's why we're doing what we're doing. We don't get no extra salary or nothing. In fact, the boss man trying to cut us off, you know. All that don't make no difference. None of it makes any difference. The same thing applies this week as it did week before last. Everything boss man do, it looks like he's trying to help us, but he has to come and sit down and say, uh, let's work this out. Because I'm not going for none of that mystery stuff where, you know, it's not that we don't trust boss man, even if he said that he was nice, but, you know, not to because after all, he's been honest with the Indians and everybody. Think about that. And that stuff about fork tongueism and nah. Indians just make it up just because of Wounded Knee and Sand Creek and all of those places. Man, the people are so, look, it's not even, it is unbelievable. And they just go on and have their breakfast and go have their lunch and they just go on and tell another lie. And it's nothing. And, uh, and I'm going to move toward a close. Excuse me for not doing the part we said we would do, but we'll get to it. You look at this period of time. This period of time is just what we thought it would be. 2020 was the most chaotic year they've had on the, the white man's calendar. Yeah. It ain't been nothing like this. And they saying that they make me sad sit down and listen to them. They, they just say that the year, and then they go over all the stuff that happened. <laughs> I said, why y'all had a bad this year? And we're hoping for another year. I said that the pattern is going to keep on heading. Y'all headed down, and you're not reforming. I'm sorry. This is what I'm saying to myself. It ain't gonna be no good for you. You got you got to straighten up. And old uh, slow Joe, whatever he's calling me, <laughs> right? <laughs> They're not answering the, 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 the questions of the society, and therefore they'll continue like they're going. Now here we are. We got the world going crazy. We got uh, our all of our people. Every. Everything we've said have come true right in front of our faces. So whether they have a demonstration 
and it's Black Lives Matter, and we're down there talking, and the Black Lives Matter people are going around us to come back over there to make sure we don't, you know. And you can describe, this is a theater that's down here. And they get so, they just stop, and ain't no fun to do it if he's going to sit there and call this is round number two. And here he goes, you know, like wrestling. That's what it was to me. I said, here they go. They're going to, you know, it's, I was describing it just like it's a wrestling match. Okay, here come Ray Stevens. Gordon George fixing to do this. And he, oh, my goodness, right? <laughs> he's body slammed on the concrete, and he hasn't even broke no arms and no nothing. Boy, this guy is good, right? That's what we was doing down there. For all them people to zip back over, and uh, whether we was down here, wherever we was, we are on the conscience of the people more than anybody. That's just, they act like that. Like the police cut us off to, on the sidewalk, hey, da 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 da, and he's talking crazy. That happens all the time. There's an Islamic revival going on, and all our people, hey man, they've been attacking Iran since the beginning. Iran is making mistakes. No, 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 not Iran. But some of the sweetie pies, some of our brothers, we're going to send them a message you made a mistake. You got to straighten up. You know, you got to straighten up. You know, if you don't straighten up, you know what I mean. Uh, you won't get the benefits of all the martyrdom of all the people that uh, a million people died in the Gulf War, 1980, 1988, you know. And they're thinking about themselves. Well, they can't do that. And anybody that loves their nation and their people, they have already They've already been successful, way successful. Export of the re revolution, revolution is export. Death to America. America just about got two, three more weeks and they're gonna fall out, drop dead. And from what they was talking about then, who would have believed that America would be where they are now? Right. Right. And what they do to us, more than Mary. We told them and we tell everybody else, you tied to us now. Every time you do something to me or to us, five things are going to happen to you. They don't know whether it's true or not because sure it is four or five things happen to them. Yeah, they don't know. And to tell you the truth, we don't either. We're inspired to say that and it's coming from somewhere and they're getting a the stew whooped out of them. You know, it's still getting worked on us because we don't care. You've already did everything. We're not impressed with boss man. Boss man, the loss, look at here. You're talking about chaos and confusion and unex, unex, un, unintended, unintended uh, incidents coming up all the time, circumstances. So they do 911 to get everybody, da 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 da. da. And, and then they go and they do. We keep everybody fighting and we'll get all the money. They won't develop their country and we'll get all the money. And they go right there to Afghanistan and in two days they just blew up everybody. They're going to win and da 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 da. And then they get super arrogant. They said, we just knocked this off. We go get Iraq. They didn't even wait. They run straight to Iraq and they got there. So, I think we made a mistake. And they can't go home. They can't go home. They can't leave. And remember, everything they have done, they have paid a, a cost that's in colonial wars. It's always the white folks with the weapons kill a thousand uh, black people to one of theirs. You know. Uh, oh, Commander Rhodes. Cape Town was talking about the people of Montebelli land and how they uprising and all that. 
and the white folks, according to their mathematics, whooped all them people and they didn't lose with eight white folks. Okay? Because you got to remember, they had leopard skin shields, right, and they had the rifles, and then the Maxim gun, the machine gun, just come out in the 1880s. They did good, God Almighty. They just slaughtered our people. And uh, Rhodes said, hey, we didn't lose but eight people. And the whole, he was speaking from Cape Town, but he meant the whole Southern Africa experience. That's, that's standard a lot of times. Because we didn't use proper guerrilla warfare in those days. You know, we'd fight them out in the open, we'd run around in a circle, and they just pick us off. Or they would do like the French do, just galvanize. Uh, and the British did it too, into a circle, and just fire as they run all around. They just fire at them repeating rifles and just killing us like dogs. Yeah. And when we won, and took over Khartoum, it went white now and blue now, now we. Old Commander Rhodes was down there and he was talking and he tried to give uh, the Mahdi a robe from the Emperor of China. He said, I don't want it. And they killed old, uh, what was that? Moses, they killed him. Charles Manson. Charles, they, they knocked him over. And, but the next year they came back, Ketchner and him with machine guns. The brothers had them beautiful white robes just riding on the horses and camels, and they slaughtered them. Okay, so IUDs and all of this, the brothers were using some good guerrilla tactics. IUDs, look at everybody came back here. Had head blown off, legs blown off. Hey man. You should have seen how they used to drive. They would be driving almost at 100 miles an hour. So, yeah, trying to beat them. It didn't happen. Right now, the, the, the Americans praying, please let us leave Afghanistan. We just want to go. We want to go home. We can't go. You know, and they, they old friends, dumb Taliban. Those people you have never experienced. Nobody that dumb. They're like, I never want to get captured by the Taliban or, or, or Dale Bundy's or Salafis. They're all the same. I wouldn't want to, because they don't have no, your blood is halal. We just kill niggas. Like them dumb guys cut people's head off on TV. The blood of a Muslim is prohibited for them. Cut them niggas' head off. Because they don't believe in the shape. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Hey, the people, your life is not worth a plug nickel with them. Okay, what I want to say is this. We're going into a new year. We have our plans and just hold on. We'll deal with our, our own plans in our own time, in our own way. Uh, we have not done that bad. Technically, we've done better than everybody else. But for this go around, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. We've been dealing with con con controlled implosions, you know, 9 11, all that stuff. Yeah. Chaos, unexpected circumstances. You can't take uh, the Chinese lightly. I mean, they got to face their own stuff. But I'm talking about for the United States. <coughs> they were sure 10, 15 years ago, the early part of the century, Chinese are getting rich. They're going to be Democrats in a minute. They had it. If you could imagine how mad they are because they kept communism, and they're not doing a bad job. And everybody recognized it. Well, everybody all up say, hey man, 95% of the people in China like that. And now they're on this new uh, eliminating poverty. 
they go in, they got a list of poor people, and they, 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 got, they, they are systematically alleviating poverty. And it's not by their, uh, you know, they just, when they get the whole village together, because most of the people are the real poor now, out in the countryside. So they move them to the city, and build houses for them, and then they can go do this and go do that, or whatever they want to. And education, they get free education, you know, and stuff like that. And they don't judge whether you got out of poverty or not. They have a, what they call a democratic meeting, and all of them they have the whole village. And the village knows who's getting better <laughs> and who's not. So they, right. they, they used to call it in the old <laughs> communist days, self-criticism, criticize your policy, criticize, you know. And so I was watching one guy. He said, that guy there, he, he doing pretty good. He got two kids, they didn't want to to the city and they making big money and uh, he playing, he's out of poverty. Because so the village know the people, you know what I mean, and sometimes people be tired. They're, I would say, 80% honest, but you got to catch the other 10% and the other 10% after that, they just get away. You know, you can't make it perfect, but they are cutting down on poverty. How about, while we're getting poorer and poorer, look at that. When you drag 800 million, well, let's just be generous to the white man, 700 million, or 600 million people out of poverty in 40 years? Shh, good God, man. I mean, way out of poverty. You know, hey, man, that's saying something. The United States didn't expect that. They expected. We're going to send all our factories over to them. They're going to become the workshop of the world. And they're going to all become Democrats and Republicans. Chinaman said, why should we look at y'all? You can't uh, talk about you're going to get $2,000 or $600. Then you stick a bill on it that way you can't vote on it. We don't, we don't do that. Right? We build bullet trains. We do this. They, they tell it now, can you imagine? That's what got the Americans mad. There's unintended circumstances. The Russians working with the Chinese, the Russians, Iranians, and Chinese working together. You see what I mean? Having military operations together. That's throwing the equilibrium. This boy is in more trouble than he realized. He's in bad trouble. Those are unintended circumstances. They thought that they was going to have a free ride. Like, okay, you see the rich, the poor, here what we're going to have. We're going to have, what was they calling it a few years ago? 99% uh, or something. You know, when people was uh, having demonstrations. They was, Occupy. Huh? Occupy. Occupy Wall Street. Mm -hmm. What they were saying was basically true. Hey, 99 uh, hey, man, y'all got all the money. But they thought, well, we just come back in with a time, scrub it up. They looked at it as preemptive. All that stuff they was doing, like 9-11, preemptive. All the stuff they was doing was preemptive. Controlled implosion. If you can control the implosion, you can control, control the recovery. They're all out of hand. I'm sorry. And, and the last thing about our people, I believe we're just going to win our people. Uh, we won't get all of them, but who needs all the people? We believe, and we have some evidence that some you know, things floating around that they can't keep everybody. And they have some people that can read and write enough to know that uh, if they get to throwing people overboard, it's going to be the Negroes. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the officers, the, the people that they are. Not me, boss man. What do you expect me to jump off in the river or something? You know, it's 
and I was annoying you. My hands is tied. That's the white man. My hands is tied. You know the system. That's how it works. You know? That's how it works. You know? Okay. We on a roll. And we're going to do better. And we're not falling for none of their dumb games to make us mad or distant or not feeling compassionate for our people or not allowing, like I noticed this other Sunday when the brother that was a teacher, your friend, mm -hmm. when we mentioned something about black, he was almost relieved, you know, and I was just thinking, we don't have to we don't even have to think about black people. There they are. You know what I mean? We <laughs> were so. It, it, he act like he was thinking. I hope they don't get up and then forget about black people. You know. That's why I was giving them all the subjects of all the the studies on black kids and all that, so he would know that yeah, we're not locked into. Just here, we're part of the global, you know. Right. That's what I was trying to explain. If we just locked in to, to black people, hey man, if we save every black person, you'd still be drowning next week or burning up, catching on fire. If that, right? That's what be happening. You know, anytime uh, a half a million animals and koala bears burn up in Australia, right? They have to drop carrots out of the plains so they can eat. This stuff has not gone crazy. You know, the poor polar bears walking up. You ever see the commercial? The poor polar bears walking up and down that thing looking for something. And these people are mean. They don't care about none of that. Okay. Are there any questions or comments? Um. <clears throat> you know, this brother said, a lot bless you and your family. Mashallah, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, let me see, let me check the comments over here. Uh, yeah, brother's giving the salams, and a brother did say, um, they always trying to deny our African American brothers knowledge, experience, and awareness of Islam. Shake my head. The brother said, and, uh, let me check in one second. But you know, one thing about that is uh, we can take that without being uh, put out of the shape or mad. Because they